If you're serious about improving your tennis, there are two things that you're going to need to do on an ongoing basis. Number one is high quality practice on court done consistently. And number two is work on improving your physical ability so that you're capable of doing the things that you're trying to practice. You have to do both of these things if you want to continue to improve because if you only do one of them you'll improve a little bit but then you'll plateau and you'll get stuck at a certain level. Now I spend a lot of time talking about improving your physical ability so in this video I'm going to be focusing on the way that you practice, the quality of your practice and we're going to be talking about exactly what you should be practicing because if you work on the wrong thing you won't improve and we're going to be talking about how you need to practice because if you don't practice in the right way you won't improve so we're going to cover both of them hopefully you find the video helpful if you do it'd be much appreciated if you could give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to the channel it really helps me out if you could do that as well so let's start by talking about what you need to work on because this is really important when it comes to improving something it takes a lot of conscious effort you have to think about it continuously and that means you can only work on one thing at a time maximum two things but realistically only one thing at a time if you try and think about too many things you'll simply not do anything properly and you won't end up learning and you won't end up improving so because you're only able to think about one thing at a time you need to make sure that you're focusing on the right thing and this is where tennis is tricky because in order for you to improve your forehand or your backhand or your serve or whatever it is there's probably a number of different things that you do need to improve but you can't work on all of them what you need to do is fix the underlying problem or the first thing that's going wrong with your stroke i find when it comes to ground strokes most players are focusing on completely the wrong thing and i think a large part of the blame lies with coaches these days if you look around the videos on youtube there are thousands of videos talking about the forehand and the backhand and they're all talking about the swing and what you do with your racket and your follow through and the contact point and all that stuff and it is kind of well it is very important but when you've watched the vast majority of players play that are watching these youtube videos the mistake isn't the precise way that they're swinging it isn't the way that they're patting or not patting the dog it isn't the fact that they're not taking it at the apex or taking the ball on the rise the problem is they're not set up in the right position in time for their shots. I have a coaching program where I work with players from all around the world and players send me their videos for technical analysis and 99, and I mean 99% of the time, the issue is nothing to do with the biomechanics. The issue is they either didn't prepare quickly enough or they weren't set up in the right position for their shot. Now that might not apply to you. You might be one of the players that needs to focus on some particular aspect of the swing but most players that isn't the problem and one of the reasons they never progress in terms of their technique is they you know they're working on the forehand and they're worrying you know do I let go of my racket at this point do I let go of my racket at this point what's the correct way to do the racket lag and all that stuff when the real problem is they were so close to the ball and they were hitting the ball late that they didn't have a chance of hitting a high quality forehand and that's why they're never able to fix the problem so you need to fix the first thing that's going wrong in your stroke so that might mean you need to focus on split stepping for the next six months it might mean that you need to focus on doing a unit turn for the next few months until it's a habit if you're working on your serve it might mean that you just need to focus on the ball toss and just getting into a good loading position or maybe you're starting from a half position and just practicing the ball toss whatever the first thing that's going wrong in your technique is that is what you need to spend time prioritizing now if you're really good with the preparation and you've got all that and you're a higher level player then yeah definitely be focusing on the the precise biomechanics or whatever else you need to, to focus on and then you've got to take that component that you're working on and now what we're going to talk about is how to actually perform the practice because this is crucial as well just quickly before we get to the next section on practice I want to let you know about a free tennis vision starter program that I've created for you because like I said earlier in order to get better you have to be capable of doing the things that you're trying to do and the biggest limitation for most players is the visual system they can't read where the ball's going quickly enough they can't track it well enough they can't judge distance and start their swing at the right time so that's why I've created this free vision program to help you improve your visual skills so you can play higher level tennis I'll place a link to the program up there and I'll place a link down in the description so you can start working on it 
Now that you know what you need to work on, we need to talk about how to work on it because it's absolutely crucial if you want to improve and develop good habits and new technique. Now at the start, you're in the conscious phase of learning. So that means you have to think about what you're doing consciously. So whatever I've decided that I needed to do, so say my problem is my unit turn, I'm not doing an effective unit turn, and I need to think about doing my unit turn in a certain way, I'm gonna to have to think about those movements because this isn't a natural thing for people to do in everyday life. So you have to consciously think about it. Okay, I'm gonna land from the split step, and as soon as I land, I'm gonna rotate my upper body and my pelvis together with my racket in this position or this position, or if you're on your back end, this position, whatever the specifics of the unit turn that you're doing are. You have to focus on it and you have to think about it. And you have to practice it at the right level of difficulty. And this is key. And the level of difficulty is gonna depend on your ability level. So for me or for someone else, the right level of difficulty might be without a ball. So I'm working on my unit turn, I need to just practice doing this just doing my unit turn over and over, or maybe that's too much. Maybe the split step is too much. Maybe I just start by doing this. And then when I feel confident doing this movement, now I add in the split step. And maybe that's the right level of difficulty. Or maybe it needs to be a little bit harder. Maybe you're past that, and now maybe you can do it using a ball machine or someone feeding you the ball. So they're just feeding you the same ball over and over again. And all you're thinking about is as they make contact with the ball, landing from your split step and doing the unit turn. And obviously you're gonna try and hit the shot and you're gonna try and hit the best shot that you can. But your focus is on the unit turn. The only thing that matters is, did I land and did I do that unit turn straight away? If you hit the ball over the back fence, it doesn't matter because your job is to get the unit turn. So that's what you have to practice at the right level of difficulty. So often it's that progression without the ball first, then with a really simple feed. So just a single feed, you know exactly where it's going. That's kind of the next progression. Then after that, you can challenge it by making the feed a little bit more difficult. So now maybe I'm using a, a ball machine, I'm feeding one backhand, and then I'm feeding one forehand, and all I'm working on is the unit turn on the forehand. The only reason I fed the backhand is just to distract me, so that now when I come back, I've got to focus on the unit turn on the forehand, so the distraction is taking my mind off the unit turn, so then I've got to rethink about it, and that gives me the correct level of difficulty to improve the unit turn. It's the only thing that I'm thinking about. And then you progress from there, so maybe I'll just work on a variety of feeds, or now maybe I can get into a rally situation. And in the rally situation, all I am trying to improve is the unit turn. That's all I care about. How many times out of 10 did I do the unit turn correctly? Again, doesn't matter where the ball goes. It's all about, did I do the unit turn correctly? Or if you're working on something else, say you are a more advanced player and you're really working on driving through your back hip to initiate the kinetic chain on your forehand or backhand, all you're evaluating yourself on is, did I drive through the hip appropriately on every single shot. So that's kind of how you consciously think about something and practice at the right level of difficulty. Now we need to talk about the number of repetitions it takes to go from the conscious stage of learning into the associative stage, which is the next stage, and then how many it is to go from the associative stage into the autonomous stage where things are a habit because that's where you need to get to if you want your new technique to stick in a match. So to go from the cognitive to the associative stage, where you don't have to think about it so much and it's not so kind of energy sapping and focused, it's about a thousand repetitions. So whatever it is that you're thinking about or working on, it's a thousand high quality repetitions. So in the example I just gave, it's a thousand good repetitions of the unit turn to move into the next phase. And that takes a decent amount of time. 
I actually made a video a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, where I was working on high volleys. Now, I'm naturally a right-handed player. Unfortunately, I injured my collarbone in a mountain bike crash, so now I'm relearning to play left-handed, so I'm trying to become the best player I can, and one of the things I'm trying to develop is a good attacking net game, and I need to develop the habit of keeping my head up through contact on the volleys. So I made a video, and my intent was to do a thousand volleys in one session. Didn't know how long it was going to take. It took me about three hours on the ball machine of just continually volley, 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 pick up the balls, volley, volley, volley. So that was three hours to get through the cognitive stage of learning. And then we've got another 9,000 repetitions as we move through the associative stage to get to the bit where it becomes a habit. So with those high volleys, it's effectively going to take me about 30 hours of practice 10,000 repetitions, 30 hours of thinking about nothing else other than keeping my head up on the volley. And that's what you need to do as well. It is a lot of repetitions to create a new habit. And this is why players really struggle, or one of the many reasons players really struggle to improve their technique, because they don't do enough repetitions thinking about the same thing. So if you're working on your unit term, you need 10,000 repetitions, effectively maybe 30 hours worth of work, just thinking about the unit turn. So that's a three, you know, depending how often you're playing, if you're playing three hours a week and all you're doing is focus practice on your forehand or on your backhand or whichever side you're trying to improve your unit turn on, you know, that's gonna take you 10 weeks of thinking about nothing else. Now, if you're not playing three times a week, it's gonna take you longer. But that is how you actually get better at stuff. That's what you need to do in terms of your practice. You can't shortcut the process. The reason that pros are able to adjust their technique is they spend so many hours on court. So they make an adjustment and they do it, but they just get 10,000 reps done very quickly, which is how they're to be able to progress so quickly. But obviously most people can't spend that, time, that much time on court. So you just have to accept that if you want to improve your technique, really develop new habits, high quality technique, it takes this length of time. So it is 10,000 repetitions focusing on your unit term, then maybe 10,000 reps focusing on your spacing, then it's maybe 10,000 reps focusing on driving through your hip to start your kinetic chain, and then it's maybe 10,000 reps focusing on watching the ball through contact, done in that order. So that's 40 to 50,000 reps of focus work to develop a high level forehand or a relatively high level forehand, providing you've got the skill to do it. And that sounds like a lot, but this is the truth about how learning works and how much effort it takes to get better at tennis. What most people do is not this. They try and do too many things all in one go. They try and do too advanced a technique too early on in the progression. They end up not being able to do it, spinning their wheels, getting really frustrated, and just getting stuck at a certain level for most of their life. So hopefully you understand why I'm explaining this to you. I want you to become a better tennis player, and in order for me to help you do that, I have to tell you the truth about how it works. There are thousands of videos out there that say, hit the ball like Federer in three simple steps. Learn Djokovic's backhand in six minutes. One hour tennis transformation. These are the greatest tennis players of all time. We are not gonna learn their technique in five minutes. There are no secrets to high level tennis and professional techniques. It is about mastering the basics and mastering the basics takes time. You need to practice in the right way. You need to focus on the right thing. You need to do enough high quality repetitions until it becomes a new habit. Then you move on to the next thing and that is how you develop high level technique or better technique and really become a better tennis player. Whew. Okay, so hopefully that all made sense. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you've got any questions about what I've covered here, leave your comments down in the comments section. I always look forward to reading them. A reminder about the free vision program. Vision really is the biggest limiting factor for most people. Even with amazing practice, if you can't see the ball well, you're only gonna get so far. So a reminder about that free program, and I will catch you next time.